Sure, right here first. Uh, Cam, you've seen Tanner Price kind of grow as an athlete and as a leader. Um, when he first started, everybody kind of thought he was kind of timid, and now you've seen kind of Tanner grow into his own along with him, so have you. Um, how has that connection grown between the two of you? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's grown, you know, since day one. I mean, uh, it seems like it was yesterday when we first started throwing, uh, you know, 707 is right when we got there. And, um, you know, now we're just, uh, you know, seniors and leaders of this offense. And, um, you know, we know what we're capable of. And, you know, we're just working on, you know, bringing, bringing everyone together as an offense and, um, you know, just getting, getting some more points up on the board and playing well. But um, he's doing good. I think, uh, you know, I don't think he had the year he wouldn't have last year, you know, personally. But we had a lot of injuries up front. But he's, uh, you know, he's looking to have a big year this year. I think uh, he's very excited. And as a team, we're really excited to see what he's going to do. Uh, Kevin Conley, Fox 8 in Greensboro. Talk, I think a lot was made how you guys finished last year um, and how Wake has finished the last couple of years, kind of leaking a little bit of oil. Talk a little about how it's sort of maybe changing that uh, towards the end of the year. All right, well, I, I think, like we all know, that we didn't finish the way we wanted to the, the last few seasons. So I think it's just that we need to – Make sure we're focusing on uh, winning towards the end of the season. Um, I, I think we've hit uh, a few bumps in the road towards the end of the season, like last season. We had a few uh, guys in, in a little trouble and injuries that hit us towards the end of the season. So if we can, we can try to get these people healthy and out of trouble, then that will just help us. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, just – just also having you know some, some good senior leadership, which which we have this year. Um, you know, just guys who have experience and knowing that um, you know we gotta you know we gotta be all in for this for this last few games. You know, I know we've been through a tough season, um, but just bringing younger guys along, keeping everyone focused. You know, for those last three four games, um, and just knowing what it means our season. I mean, we we didn't play well last year, and we could have gone to a bowl game, um, which would have been huge you know, for the program. So. Um, you know, this year, you know, I think we definitely have a different, you know, you know, mindset and, and mentality going on around this team right now. So I think you'll see a different deep team. Down the middle of the back end. Jamie Ricks, News 14, Carolina. Mike, can you specifically talk about the focus? You, you talked about the senior leadership you guys are going to have this year. Obviously, you're a part of that. Can you talk about the focus that you have or have had since spring, spring uh, since the spring games and just going into this season as far as shutting down your Twitter account and just kind of having this type of focus that I've never seen, you know, out of you since I've been here? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it's just it's senior year and, uh, you know, you know, coming off some ankle surgery, you definitely want to need to focus and, and just get back to 100%. But um, I think this team, you know, has something, you know, special going on. And, um, you know, since I've been to school, I haven't seen a team, um, you know, have the type of work ethic that, that we've had this offseason together, guys just competing. So, um, just myself, I've been working hard. I think it's rubbing off on other guys, um, you know, to put in the work. So um, this is, this can be a special team. I mean, we're definitely focused on, you know, winning the AC championship. And that's the goal um, around the locker room. So, um, you know, we think we got the players in there. We got the talent to do it. Um, you know, we just got to keep working hard. Mike, this question is for you, Kenny Beck, WXI I-12. You had 36 more catches than the next closest uh, wide receiver on Wake last year, and you missed basically three games, two complete games, and a big chunk of another. Can you discuss the dynamic between wanting to be the go-to guy, wanting to be a huge part of the offense, but also the need for someone else to step up and take some of the pressure off of you, and can you give us some insight as to who that guy might be this year? Uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think, um, you know, in my room, I think um, guys aren't shying away from, you know, hearing that and reading it. I think um, they know that we need another receiver to step up and play. And, um, you know, I've challenged uh, guys in the room, you know, that we need, um, you know, someone else to come in and catch 60, 70 balls. Um, and they've been working hard. I mean, um, we got guys in there that are capable of, of playing big. I think the biggest thing is just being consistent. You know, we can't have drop balls out there. Um, we need guys got to be, you know, making plays and, uh, you know, just challenging those guys. And, um, you know, they've been, they've been responding well. I mean, there's, there's a group of guys that are just working hard. And we've been playing 7-on-7. Seven seven. I've, you know, I've seen great things out of Brandon Terry. I mean, he looks like 
um, you know, a beast out there. And I think a lot of people don't know about him is, you know, he played last year uh, with a big cast on his hand, and he missed all of training camp um, with an eye injury, so he's kind of out of shape. Um, but right now he's got his, you know, his hand free, and he's been working hard. So I think he's going to step up big for us. And then another guy, Matt James, who was injured last year, I think. Um, yeah, I think he's really grown up, and I think he can step into, you know, maybe that number two spot that you were talking about. And I think he can catch 60, 70 balls for us. I mean, his ceiling for potential is, you know, is is is, uh, is, is very high. So um, we're expecting some big things out of you know, some other receivers this year to help out. Brian, former head again with WFMY in Greensboro. Uh, this question is for both of you. We've seen kind of, we've heard about riffs and things like that in the locker room, and just some disagreements. Have you guys come together? Have you guys sorted that all out and kind of uh, all agreed to get along and step it up? Uh, yeah, definitely. I think uh, I think towards the end of the season last year, uh, I think you saw some of uh, players like myself and Tanner and Nikita uh, speak out after the game just because I think we were more unhappy with you know what was going on with players and uh, you know we didn't feel the guys were bought in um, to the program and um, I think we were just setting the tone for this year. I think you've seen it. Um, in the offseason, everyone's bought in, and, um, and we got Coach Grove and the coaching staff. I mean, they've won AC championship, been doing Orange Bowl. Um, you know, guys got to be bought in and, and uh, willing to do anything for the team. So uh, I think last year you saw that. You know, guys, we were just unhappy with the way you know, the season was going towards the end of the season, and um, I think as you know, juniors, we were just kind of setting, you know, setting in place. You know, to these younger guys, this is how it's going to be, and um, you know, we we're just kind of calling guys out, but. Yeah, they responded well, and you know everyone's you know bought in right now. I think Justin would agree. Yeah, I think everybody's bought in. We're well focused. Like for for example, like uh, years in the past, we've had uh, seven on Santa in the off season, which aren't mandatory, but we've seen a lot of people take take a step back and walk into the locker room, things like that. But now it looks like everybody's seeming to come out and, and want to compete and get better. Question for Michael, uh, Jeff Bramley, WRL. Uh, you guys seem to have a, a rotating list of quarterbacks for a while. A lot of it was due to injury, and then there was the competition. Uh, what do you think separated Tanner from everybody else? And what do you think is one of his biggest attributes as to why he still is your quarterback? Um, you know, I think the thing about Tanner is he can make every throw. I think you know he, his arm is you know one of the strongest in the ACC, and and uh, you know he can make that. Know, speed out, you know, from the opposite hash, you know, if he has to, and um, you know, he's, I mean, he's a great player. I mean, I think last year he, he started getting hit from places he, he wasn't expecting to get hit from, and and uh, you know, I'm not a quarterback, but I, I can only imagine what that would do to you when you're back there. So um, I think the biggest thing for us is just establishing the run game this year. I think it will help the, help out the passing game, and um, you know, just protecting him back there because. We know what he can do when he's got time back there. You know, he can lead us to some big, some big wins over some big teams, um, which he's done in the past. Dan Satora, D DTB Media, and a couple years ago, you guys went up against Syracuse in a non-conference game. You have them in your division now in the ACC. Start with Justin. It's for both of you. What do you think about having them with you here in the conference now? Uh, well, Syracuse, that was uh, one of my first games as a, a young player. In I liked it as far as the uh, atmosphere at the stadium, so I'm excited that we were able to come back and, and play them as they joined the ACC. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, the Carrier Dome is awesome. It's also awesome atmosphere, and uh, you know, we're excited to have them in ACC. You know, as well with Pitt and uh, Louisville next year. Um, you know, we're excited. I was I was so excited when it said we we're going back to the Carrier Dome this year, just because of. Um, the way we lost, you know, sophomore, we lost in overtime. We had a big lead. Um, we had a lot of guys playing, you know, as sophomores, and they're still playing. So um, we're definitely anxious to get back up there and uh, play those guys. Uh, it, should, it should be a lot of fun. Michael, you're asked to wear a lot of hats, very versatile player. Is that more physically or mentally draining and demanding? Um, yeah, I think it's a little, little bit of both. I think. Uh, you know, when it's time to throw the ball, I think that's a lot of fun. Uh, uh, it's not physical or demanding. But, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, I do well uh, with, with taking in the playbook and, um, you know, from week to week, the game plan changes. I do well with, 
we learn a lot of different things after you do that week. And um, when you get back there and take some carries sometimes, so that could be, you know, physically demanding on, on your body. It might take a toll and things like that. But uh, yeah, that's why, you know, I've been putting in some work, you know, in the offseason to get ready for, you know, carrying the load and things like that. So um, I have a lot of fun with it, though. You know, anything the coaches ask, um, you know, I'm always itching to, you know, touch the ball, you know, more if I, if I, if I can. So I have a blast with it. Coach Lovell does a great job of, um, you know, designing the, you know, plays and, um, you know, schemes going against defenses. Hey, uh, Michael and Justin, good to see you. Jim Connors from News 14 Carolina and Tom Moore Cable. Uh, we touched on that football fortunes uh, by comparison to years past have been down a little bit. And then when you factor in what's happened with the basketball program and how fractured the fan base is, how much pressure are you feeling to give the overall Deacon fan base the taste of something that they haven't had in a long, long time? Justin, why don't you go first? Uh, yeah, well, um, in the past they've had uh, like Orange Bowl teams and, and for basketball we've had teams be ranked uh, like top five in the, in the nation. So I feel like it's, it's really important to the fans that we get back to winning so that uh, the, fan, the fans have somewhat, something to look forward to seeing it every weekend and look forward to having uh, really good programs coming out of the way for us. Yeah, I, mean, I completely agree. I think, uh, you know, that we haven't had some good seasons these past years. And, uh, going to the Music City Bowl was, was a lot of fun uh, for the team and myself, and I think it was it was awesome for the fan base. And we had tons of fans out there in, in Nashville. And, uh, you know, I think uh, I, mean, I love our fans. They're awesome, and, and, and they deserve, you know, to, to be going to a bowl game every year and, um, you know, watching, you know, us, us win. What more games do we lose? So, um, you know, I think... You know, I don't think we're feeling too much pressure, but uh, I think we're just we're just gonna go out there and play. I think we had a really good team coming up, um, and I think uh, I think the fans know it too. I think uh, there's a little buzz around. You know, Winston Salem right now. I think we're gonna have a good year. Jay, last one. Let's go one more. I'll start with Justin, but a question uh, for both. You guys have kind of a funky start to your schedule. You open up on a Thursday night. Week two is a Friday night. And then Saturdays, the rest of the way, can you sort of compare, contrast the difference between playing on a Thursday versus or, or a Friday versus playing on a Saturday when most people are watching college football? If you had a preference, would it be all Saturdays or it doesn't matter? Well, the thing about playing on Thursdays and Fridays is like you know that there's like the only games on that that's what people are going to watch. So you really you really know you want to prepare pretty very well for those Thursday nights and Friday yeah. nights. Um, also, it's a little bit different because you'll be playing at, at night versus like on Saturdays, you could be playing at, at noon or earlier in the day. So it's just, it's a little bit different, but it's a good experience both ways. Yeah, and I'm personally a huge fan of uh, night games and Thursday and Friday night games. I think it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, you'll be on, I know the Boston College game will be on ESPN, so that's more of a national stage, which is, which is good for our team. and. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge college football fan also, so, you know, we'll, we'll get a practice in, I think, Saturday morning, and we'll just get to sit back and, uh, you know, watch a bunch of games all day, get to catch out, catch some more ACC games, SEC games, so um, that's a lot of fun, you know, having some guys over just watching games all day. All right, Justin Jackson, Michael Campanero.